Uttamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Dito Jayo Dhirya Nashta Preshu Abhadresu Nityam Bhagata Sevya Bhagati Uttama Shoki Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki Nigamal Kapadadu Gal Preshu Abhakamakaram Rita Drabi Samitam Pibata Bhagutam Rashamalayam Mahora Hora Sikhubhava Gani Krishna Swadam Apagate Dhamakini Karona Shtadu Samasha Parana Kodu Noti Dham Tama Pia Dhamma Shuta Vishatam Bebo Samya Pia Dhamma Viram Viruksaram Prakyahi Dohor Marim Sanklesha Nirvana Musanti Nanya Dhadam Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinu Bandhu Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namo Shtute Jayatam Surato Pango Mama Manir Matirgati Matsavasya Parambo Jorada Namada Namoram Sriman Rasara Sadam Vivamsi Pada Kursan Vinushan Rovya Gopanata Sriya Sadam Divya Vrindaranya Kapadvamada Sri Madhvatna Gada Sima Sanashto Sri Sri Radha Srila Govinda Prasila Bihe Sevan Shumi Namo Brahmanya Devaya Go Brahmanya Taya Chajikati Taya Krishnaya Go Vinaya Namo Namaha Mangalang Bhagavan Vishnu Mangalam Gudhavjaja Mangalam Panirika Kshom Mangalaya Tano Hari Om Narayanaya Vidmahi Vasudevaya Dhimahi Tano Vishnu Prachodhyate Om Mahadevi Chavidnahi Vishnu Padnati Dhimahi Tano Lakshmi Prachodhyate Mahalakshmi namastupyam namastupyam sare sare hari pre namastupyam namastya dira dira Tapta kanchana gonangi vrindavana sare sare Vishavana sute devi pranamani hari pre Subham karoti kalyaram arukam dana samaram sati buri manasana dipa jyoti namastare Dipa jyoti danardhanam dipa jyoti paramparam dipa meturupam dipa jyoti namastare O Magana Timaranda Sanganangana Salakya Chaksurun Miritam Yana Tashmai Sri Gurvenama Sri Chaitanya Manubhishtam Stapitam Yana Bhutare Swayam Rupa Karamayam Darati Swaparandikam Vandeham Sri Guru Siyata Parakamanam Sri Gurun Vaishnavam Sha Sri Rupam Sagudatam Sahagana Raganatam Bitam Stam Sadevam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Paridana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Revam Sri Radha Krishna Paran Sahagana Lednita Vishikam Bikam Tarum Sri Krishna Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Bindam Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Transcendental Tuesday here in Spanish for Utah Our broadcast emanating out to wherever you may be Bhakta Brent, now known as Balabachanda, checks in from Vancouver, Canada I have no idea why you're in Vancouver, Canada. I'll be in Canada also this weekend. Our good friend and brilliant festival organizer, Prem Josie, whose base is Thunder Bay in Northern Ontario and who does an amazing Festival of India one day and Festival of Colors the next day. That was back in... I don't know when it was, July. But he's now expanding his influence to another medium-sized city in Ontario, Canada, called Sault Ste. Marie. There are two Sault Ste. Marie's, one on the Michigan side and another one across whatever river it is on the Canada side. So he's attempting the first Festival of Colors outside of his own home city, in Sault Ste. Marie this weekend. I'll be there. Um, I don't know what other artists. I know Jen Arden is coming. We're going to drive from Detroit Airport up to Sault Ste. Marie on Friday. So we have that in common, Balabachanda. Canadian travels this weekend. Oh, we've been talking about how it is, according to Gajendra, who was a pure devotee, very learned, versed in all the devotional practices in his previous life as King Indra, formerly King Indra, now an elephant form, yet his prayers echoed, weathering the storm, mantras resurfacing from the past, transcendental sound awakening, memories profound. So all that knowledge, that learning, that insight, which had accrued to the soul of Gajendra, or the soul currently in Gajendra's body, which had formerly been in the body of Indra none of that knowledge was lost. It was dormant for some time. But at the right time, Krishna brought about those circumstances 
whereby a generous memory of a past life bloomed, revived, you might say. It's like the lotus flower. When the sun goes down, it retracts. And then when the sun goes back up, it responds to the light. When there's darkness, it, it, it protects itself, hunkers down. When there's light, it opens up. So Krishna, even though it would seem from a materialistic point of view that having a crocodile grab your leg in the middle of the water and try to kill you, that, from a materialistic view, that would be about the worst possible thing that could happen, especially right in front of your wives and kids. Not only is it lethally dangerous, but it's just downright embarrassing. <laughs> you, you want to put your best foot forward in front of your wife and kids, always impress them as your their provider, their shelter, their rock. And here you are being humiliated by a crocodile being dragged further and further into the water. So from a materialistic point of view, there's probably nothing worse that could happen. That would be your worst nightmare. But actually, it's Krishna's special mercy upon Gajendra, offering that, the opportunity of his devotional insights, his creative efforts to, again, reappear in that lifetime as an elephant. And among the prayers that he had composed in his past life and which were now reawakening is the eighth prayer in the third chapter, the eighth canto, ninth, ninth, ninth verse, which basically says that there are six things that Krishna has. <laughs> there, he doesn't have any material karma, no material activities, no material name, no material form, no material faults, no material birth, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, in, in regards to Krishna not having a material name, he's appeared personally as the name in this Kali Yuga age. It's explained that in the first age, the springtime of the cosmic season, the Satya Yuga age, he appeared in one form, Kapil, in a white incarnation. He taught his mother, Devahuti, the whole science of Bhakti Yoga. That information is in the fourth canto, I believe, of the Bhagavatam, third, third or fourth canto. Then in the next age, he appeared, uh, Ram appeared in the age of Treta Yuga. Also, I think Hayagriva appeared. And then in the Dwarpa Yuga age, of course, Krishna appeared in his original Shaya Bhagavan, his original personal form. But in the Kali Yuga age, he appears as the name. He appears, first of all, in his own devotional incarnation, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya is only on the planet physically for 48 years, but he brings the full force of the name, the chanting of Hare Krishna. He has many learned disciples who are scholars, and they write dozens and dozens and dozens of books about this supremacy, the supreme position of the name, explaining to the living beings that the highest occupational engagement on which we could engage is taking complete shelter in the name, not using the name for material pious results, not even using the name to get rid of our past sinful activities, but simply diving into the name because the name is Krishna. The name is not a means to an end. It's not that you do something in order to get something. You chant the name in order to go more and more deeply into that practice of chanting the name. It's not a question of quantity, but you chant the name day after day after day. It's your practice. People, yogis talk about their practice. So for bhakti yoga, the practice is to chant the name day after day, never getting stale, never taking it for granted, but always approaching, awakening, and picking up your beads at the beginning of each and every new day with a renewed determination, with a refreshed vigor and enthusiasm to improve the depth, to go deep into the name, to lose oneself into the name, to have no other motives, not to look to the left or to the right. It's true. The name will give you elevation to the heavenly planets. It will give you wealth, opulence, influence beyond anything you could possibly imagine. But that's not the purpose of the name. 
You should not prostitute the name for those purposes. The name will give you love of God. Namo Mahabharanaya Krishna Pramavadaya. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu descended as Krishna himself. He came all the way from the spiritual world to deliver the name. Not so that we could use the name for some temporary benefit or temp some temporary advantage. He came to deliver Namo Mahabharanaya, the greatest benediction that the living being could possibly have is to have the name and with the treasure of the name, with the gift of the name coming directly from the spiritual world to the exclusion of all other appetites, motives, ambitions, thoughts, and desires, simply lose oneself in the name of Krishna. Through the name, one gets love of God. The name of Krishna and Krishna are non-different. It's explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that there was a warehouse. When Krishna left the planet after the Dwarfa Yuga age. He left a big warehouse full of love of God. However, in order to access that warehouse, one that had to be highly qualified. Yeshim tu antikatam papam gyanapunyu tedran varu bhajanti mamdrito hao in the Bhagavad Gita, which Krishna uttered just at the end of the Dwarpa Yoga Age, and which was a summarization, summarization of how one gets this highest gift of love of God. He explains that those who have not done any sinful activities in this life, nor have they done any sinful activities in the past life, those who are fixed, unbudgeable in their determination to pursue the lotus feet of the Lord, fixed in their vows, unshakable, those are the ones who can taste love of God. That pretty much just is, and that's just on the cusp, just on the eve of Kali Yuga, which is ironic because it's kind of like closing the barn door after the cows are out. You know, when the Kali Yuga is imminent, when the Kali Yuga is impending, there, there isn't a single soul born in the Kali Yuga that fits that qualification. Krishna might be referring to those who in the past tasted love of God as being without any sinful activities in this life or their previous lives and being full of determination. But it certainly isn't an omen for the future. Certainly in the Kali Yuga, there aren't any who qualify in those areas. So what Krishna did was he established this warehouse, packed it full of love of God, but the key was misplaced. The key is not, it's, it, it's, it's too, con I, I, I see that I, there, there's this comedian, this guy from Finland, he's kind of overweight, dumpy, and he speaks real funny. And one of his routines is that he says, there's, there's one word in English that he's had a lot of trouble understanding the meaning and how to pronounce it. And in his halting sort of oafish way, he says, this is a word that you say to the barista when they're pouring you a cup of coffee and, and you've had enough and you want them to stop. Uh, or maybe you're in Indian's home and they want to put pile more prasadam on your plate. And so he said that people use this word. Ah, da, 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 he says, it took him a while to learn how to spell that name. But once he learned how to spell it, he uses it as his password for his computer. It's a comedy routine, of course. So in the, in the same way, the, the pin code that Lord Chaitanya, that Krishna established to get into that warehouse is beyond the mental capacity of any of us to remember or to spell just the warehouse is there but there isn't anyone who knows how to get into it but lord chaitanya mahaprabhu it's like what is it ayuraga bida nidya bhakti chartam eka purusha parana shri krishna chaitanya zari kripam lord as opposed to krishna the big difference between Lord Ch Krishna and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that Krishna established the warehouse full of goodies, but he didn't allow any way to get into it for the people who are going to take their birth in the Kali Yuga. Then he came again as almost like 
to to finish what he'd started or rather to allow access to what he'd established he came as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and if you if you know about any any Krishna temples if there's any keypad whether it be an outside gate or an interior door and you don't know what the code is just do 108 <laughs> <laughs> or 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 you know download a new app and when it asks for your password do like Hari Bol 108 and it'll tell you very weak very weak because every Hari Krishna in the world that's their password it'll contain Hari Bol or 108 there are passwords that will be suggested you know by Google or Microsoft which are impossibly complicated nobody could ever guess those passwords so the the password to get into the warehouse of love of god which comes which is still available to us from dwarka yuga into kali yuga the password is Im impossible to guess even with a sophisticated code cracking program so lord chaitanya came as krishna in the form of the golden hour to make that access available to everyone. So he changed the password. Think of it, figure Lord Chaitanya, changed the password from XO dot slash big F capital F small Z capital F D U exclamation port question mark dollar sign yada 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 to Haribo 108. <laughs> so all you gotta know is Haribo 108 and you you get into that warehouse by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and you get the greatest gift that any living being could possibly taste. You get love of God simply on the basis of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram. Hare. That love of that warehouse has a unique feature. In, a, in addition to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu having given just about everybody access love of god for dummies the unique feature of that warehouse is it's the more you go in the more you go in now um you know they just had hurricane helene now they've got hurricane milton so among all the various pictures you see people with their shopping carts just clean the shelves of supplies so that they can have provisions during these natural calamities. And then uh, a lot of the news shots of the supermarkets and wholesale houses will show empty shelves. People have, people have gone in with their shopping carts and they've filled up their carpet shots. During COVID, you know, you see these people with fist fights over toilet paper and so on. But, you know, um, Walmart, Target, these uh, these outlets, Costco, they're not equipped to handle emergencies. It's like banks, you know, banks are not, if everybody asked for their money from the bank, the bank would go belly up overnight. So these um, places that cater to mass consumption cannot cope with an emergency situation where people are stockpiling. So a lot of the new shots you see are empty shelves. The warehouse, the wholesale distribution center of love of God, established by Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying, get your shopping carts, get your buckets, get your shoulder bags, get your suitcases. Here's the access. You don't have to break through a window. You don't have to pick a lock. You don't have to overrun some security guards. It's wide open. The door is not even closed. It's wide open. Everybody can come in, but the, but the problem is if everybody comes in, all of a sudden, if there's a rush, a mad rush for people to stockpile and claim, grab as much as they can, normal, normal result will be that in an hour show, everything, all the shelves are bare. Not so with, the, with this warehouse. This warehouse is such that the more love of God you plunder, the more you take, the more the shelves fill up. There's no way you can exhaust 
the shelves, the commodities in this warehouse. It's unlimited. So when we get our lives blessed by associating with a spiritual master, a bona fide Vaishnav who's coming to the line of the civic session, and our lives are changed for the better, the best way that you can cause that seed of love of God to bear fruit in yourself is then to go out and distribute it to others. This is this is what is referred to in Christendom as the gospel. Gospel translated means good news. If you knew the cure to AIDS or you knew the cure to cancer and you kept it to yourself, that would be criminal. If you knew the cure to AIDS, you knew the cure to cancer, you would naturally want to go out and share that to as many people as possible. So similarly, we know the cure, Janma, Janma Karma Medivyam Evam Yotiya Chakvadeyam Pranar Neiti Mamiti. Krishna says, if you simply know the transcendental nature, how my birth is not ordinary, how my activities are not ordinary, how my rupa is not ordinary, how my name is not ordinary, how my karma is not ordinary, how I have no material faults. If you know this truth about me, which Gajendra is enunciating in his ninth, ninth verse here in the third chapter of the Bhagavatam, you do not, again, after leaving this present body, have to take birth in this material world. You can't hold such a truth to yourself. You can't bury it. Actually, Prabhupada alluded to the fact that India had buried this for many centuries. Rather than exporting love of God, which Lord Chaitanya had let loose from the warehouse 500 years ago, and even Lord Chaitanya himself predicted, and what, and what God says is non-different from a factual reality. So when Lord Chaitanya, as none other than Krishna said, he predicted that the chanting of Hare Krishna would go to every town and village in the world. And what it comes out of God's mouth is an unalterable fact. No one can contravene the words coming from God's mouth. Simply because of the fact, on the strength of the fact that Lord Chaitanya Mahārāj said it was bound to happen. So anybody taking up that baton, taking up that torch to spread Krishna consciousness, the chanting of Hare Krishna beyond the physical boundaries of India, they are guaranteed up front in advance by none other than the Lord who created millions of universe that they will be successful. And in spite of all of that, not a single Indian, except one, came from India to transplant the practice of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Just one old man, 70 years old. No young man, no good looking man, no rich man, no wealthy man, nobody. There were plenty who came from India to America, but not, not to show generosity and largesse by blessing and enriching America, America which is materially wealthy, but spiritually impoverished. It only occurred to those who traveled from India to America to get some of that material opulence for themselves and for their family. Prabhupada said they came as beggars to beg an education to beg a job, to beg from America a position in a multinational corporation so then they could uh, they could emulate what they had seen, the lifestyle of the Americans, what they'd seen on the Bollywood movies and all like that. Not one came to give, but so many came to take. And Prabhupada said at least one person came, one elderly Bengali gentleman named A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And even though he was old, even though he had no money, even though he had not in good health, uh, he had two heart attacks on the boat on the way over to America, even though he didn't know anybody in America, he had no connections, even, even though he wasn't as, as good looking as a younger man might have been, or even a version of his younger self, he had already, it had already been established that whosoever takes up the mission of spreading Krishna consciousness to every town and village of the world, they will be successful. That has been guaranteed by Krishna himself. And the fact that Prabhupada had so many apparent disadvantages but still succeeded shows that God can do 
anything. It's impossible for an elderly man in poor health with no money and not knowing anyone go halfway around the world and establish a worldwide movement, which to this point in time has over 800 centers. That's not possible by any parameters, except he's directly in the middle of what God wants. Our Father who art in heaven, thy will be done. And all the Indians that came over in the 60s and 70s with engineering degrees or to buy motels, that wasn't what that wasn't thy will be done. That was my will be done. But when Prabhupada, with no prospects of housing or income or residency, literally almost like leaping off of a cliff, when he left India, there was no certainty whatsoever. In fact, other people said there are, there are some certainties. You're going to be poor. You're going to be hungry. You're going to be overlooked. You're going to be homeless. You're probably going to die there alone and discouraged far away from your home. These, these were the kinds of certainties which people assured him. When we use the word discourage, within the word discourage is the word courage. So Prabhupada, you know, Prabhupada had the courage to go off on the strength of the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and attempt this mission. But as soon as it became known to his so-called friends and well-wishers and peers, rather than encourage him, they tried to discourage him. They said, this is certain, this is certain, this is certain, this is certain, this is certain. And none of those were good things. But in spite of the uncertainties or the so-called certainties, which were all negative, Alpad calculated that when God is for you, who dare be against you? That Prabhupada and Krishna were a majority. His mission wasn't going to be successful based on the blessings of people. His mission was going to be successful based on the order of the Supreme Personality of God. And the fact that he had so many shortcomings or so many uh, failings, you might say, just shows Krishna's power in a greater way. Arjuna and his brothers were vastly outnumbered, outmanned, outgunned on the Kurukshetra warfield. In the natural, they had no way of winning that war. But the supernatural God who created millions of universes was driving the chariot of his devotee, Arjuna. Even Krishna had promised he wouldn't take up any weapons. He would only be on the battlefield as a non-combatant. But that was enough for Arjuna and his brothers to feel themselves confident of victory. Kunti went to Krishna and he said, Krishna, I know that you can make this happen against all odds, against all expectations. I know that if it is your will, you can safely transport my sons. You can provide the boat by which my sons cross over this dangerous ocean of the battlefield of Kurukshetra with sharks and tumangilas and man of wars and piranhas and bring them to the other side safely. If that is your determination, not all the arrows, not all the javelins, not all the swords in the world wielded by the most expert warriors can lay a finger on my sons. No weapon against them will prosper should that be your will. And once Krishna smiled and offered his assent to the prayer of Kunti's, her worries, her anxieties were behind her. She knew that though one day the sun may grow cold and the moon grow, may grow hot, Krishna will never abandon his promises to his devotees. And she was not wrong. She was not misled or misguided in her confidence. Her, in fact, her sons emerged from the carnage, the slaughter of the Kurukshetra war unscathed and to sit unchallenged, uncontested on the throne of the kingdom in Hastinapur 
all of the thorns in their sides, all of their enemies, all of their backstabbers, all of their conspirators put to the ground. So when Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Eva Kevalam Kalo Nisteva 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 Gatira Njata, he says, don't have any other concern. You needn't even worry about your housing, your food, your medicals. If you fully dive into the practice of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Nama Chintamani Krishna Chaitanya Rasha Puna Siddha Vira Vinat Vam Nami Namana. The name is full, doesn't lack anything. Everything is there. Anything that Krishna, the creator of millions of universes, can give. The Krishna who said that the chanting of Hare Krishna will be propagated all over the world by an old man in poor health with no money and no connections. The Krishna who, as a non-combatant, guided the chariot of Arjuna against vastly superior forces. That Krishna has assured you that you need not worry, you need not sweat, the little things if you take up the big thing, which is to revive your forgotten, lost Krishna consciousness by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. He says, Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama. He says, chant the holy names. In case you didn't hear it the first time, he says it a second time. Chant the holy names. In case you didn't hear it the first time or the second time, or you heard it the first time or the second time, and you you thought it was an exaggeration, or you thought that maybe Lord Chaitanya is not entirely serious, it's just one of several things you could do. He says it a third time. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama. So hopefully you'll start getting it. But he doesn't stop there. Three times, he says, all you need is to go more and more deeply into the chanting of Hare Krishna. But he doesn't stop there. He says, Kalo Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva. Not only three times possibly asserting that the chanting of Hare Krishna is the only practice that you need in this age of Kali, but then going further and saying, Nasteva, 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 nothing else. Nothing else, not penances, not austerities, not yoga, not philanthropy, not charity, nothing else is needed or even wanted in this age of Kali Yuga. Just the one thing. It is Kali Kalera Dhamma Krishna Nama Sankirtana. The religious practice. The religion. You can go to church. You can sit for big homas, fire sacrifices, uh, extending over days and days and days. Uh, you can go to yogic retreats and hobnob the bhakti fest and here and there with the greatest of all the yogi practitioners. There's nothing wrong with any of that, but none of that is going to be particularly effective. If the, if the core of your practice is not Hari Nam, chanting the holy names of the Lord, there's nothing that any of these other things can do for you in this Kali Yuga age. They may have been effective in ages past, in bygone days, but they are no longer effective in this Kali Yuga age. Kritiya Dayato Vishnu Tritiya Jate Dorpara Pura Kalotad Hari Kirtana. Kalotad Hari Kirtana. Hari Kirtan, Bhajan, chanting the holy name, is the religious practice for this particular day and age. You go back in time to the first age, the golden age, Satya Yuga, where people live for 100,000 years, and during which Valmiki, the author of the Ramayan, practiced meditation for 60,000 years in order to achieve Krishna consciousness. Yes, in that age, Dayato, meditation, was the Yuga Dharma, the religion of the age. And then as time proceeded along and the first age transitioned into the second age, the, the silver age, wherein people's lifespan is now reduced from 100,000 years to 10,000 years, you have the practice of sacrifices, yagas, in which tons and tons of ghee are poured into the flame. And the Brahmins, qualified Brahmins are officiating with the correct Vedic mantras 
pronounced just correctly with such power, in fact, that they could take an old animal and give it a new body just to show the efficacy of the mantras. And in the, those sacrifices, uh, the, the various orders of life all participated universally. The Brahmins officiated, the Kshatriyas provided the wealth and the Vaishyas, the Sudras did all the legwork. And at the end of these huge sacrificial ceremonies, Krishna himself would come and Garuda to accept the offerings and everybody would become liberated. Nowadays, the most holy place for the Muslim world is a place which they call Mecca, M-E-C-C-A. That's not the original name of that place. The original name is Makkah, M-A-K-H-A. And Makkah means Gi. It means Gi. Makkah refers to a place where in ancient days, huge extended, prolonged, hundreds of years sacrifices were performed by qualified Brahmins and financed by Chachas and Vaishas and supported by the citizenry. So it appears that in the Vedic age, the place which is revered by the Muslims as Mecca was in previous eons known as Makkah, and it was a place where huge sacrifices were performed. That was the practice for the second age, the silver age, the Treta Yuga age. And then in the next age, the Dwarpa age, in which Krishna appeared just at the end of it, is temple worship. There are the ruins of vast temple complexes in Hampi, for instance. It is said that when the Muslims wanted to smash Hampi, it took them like six months. Every day they would get up in the morning and spend the whole day, eight, 10 hours smashing with hammers and clubs. And they would do that for six months. Muslim armies, hundreds of thousands, smashing, smashing pan. And still could see what was once a vast temple complex at Hampi. And then uh, uh, Krishna Devarai, Ram Devarai, Vijayanagar, Vijayanagar. You can also see the ruins of Vijayanagar, what was once, even in, in the Kali Yuga age, a vast temple complex. Uh, Angkor Wat in Cambodia, said to be the biggest Vishnu temple in the world. You can spend days and days as a tourist, even now, touring the ruins. So that was the Yuga Dharma in the Dwarpa age. It's temple, very, very elaborate temple worship. Even now you go to some of the temples in South India, like uh, Tirupati or Sri Rangam. You go to Guru Bayo, Trivendram. There's a complete, elaborate, well-rounded life which orbits around the temple building. There are, edu there are schools wherein the temple priests educate the young people, not just on the three R's, reading, writing, arithmetic, but on character how to build character, how to be people of integrity. There are food, there are food, there are midday meals. In Jagannath Puri, famous temple in Orissa, they feed 10,000 pilgrims every single day, and they've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. Tirupati, um, uh, um, a temple in uh, West, uh, West Coast, uh, Udupi, Udupi, uh, feeding thousands and thousands of pilgrims. If you have some money, fine. You can get a nice a nice gourmet meal. If you have no money, you can get kitri. But everybody can get fed. So there's food there. There's education there. There's community. There's worship. There's the ceremonies. There's the kirtan, the chanting. And many temples have a, a, an auditorium, an outdoor auditorium, where in the evenings, during special festival seasons, there's a Kuchipudi dance, Katakali dance, Bharatanatyam dance. Now, everything was, the temple was more than just a place of worship. It was a community center around which the whole life of the community evolved. Now, this was typical in the Dwarpa Yuga age, and it even extended uh, into the Kali Yuga age as well. But none of those, not meditation, if you want to put on a show, conduct a farce. Yeah, you can call yourself a meditator in the Kali Yuga age, but uh, true meditation is really practiced by those with a lifespan of 100,000 years. And temple worship by those with a lifespan of 10,000 years. 
I mean, uh, sacrifice and temple worship by those of the lifespan of a thousand years. But in the Kali Yuga age, Prayon Apishad Hiram Saleh Kabdi, Prayon Apayosha Shabda, Kale Yushmin Age, Manda Samanda Deo, Manda Hill Powering. In the age of Kali Yuga, when I, I saw something, an article came through yesterday about the average expected lifespan. And the uh, theme of the article was that we've been increasing lifespan over several decades, but now the general consensus is it's maxed out. It's plateaued where there's nothing we can do to increase lifespan more than it is. I think it used to be 72 for a man and 77 for a woman. Now it's uh, 82 for a man and 84 for a woman. That's the average expected lifespan. But the uh, theme of the article was we, we don't see anything we can do either in terms of lifestyle changes or nutrition or atmospheric changes, which is going to boost it up any further. You, we, we plateau. So if you're 82 as a man or 84 as a woman, like <laughs> every day you open your eyes and see the light, the rise of the sun, you give a fist bump, <laughs> give a hallelujah, give a Hare Krishna, because that's a bonus. <laughs> But it's not how long you live. It's not how long you live, but it's it's the quality of your life. Prabhupada says, Jesus Christ, he only lived 32 years. Lord Chaitanya was only on the planet 40, 42 years. Shankaracharya was even less than that. Shankaracharya was also 32 years, but yet they made such a great contribution and brightened the future of anyone who likes to do something as simple it's straightforward. It's chanting with with sincerity and application. They made the path back home, back to Godhead, wide open. They made a broad highway in their short lifespans for anyone who wants to seriously take up the practice of diving into the holy names of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Hari Hari. Well, thanks for joining me this morning. More more today than yesterday, that's for sure. Repeated repeated comments by Michael Bambino. A little a little distasteful some of the words he uses, but he seems kind of appreciative, kind of good channel brother, Nicholas Tesla, an elephant never forgets. Yes, the truth can and set, will set you free. Gospel equals goodness, horrible. Anyway, not, not sure what the thread is there, but many comments by Michael Bambina. Appreciate your jumping board. And again, Balava Chandra tuning in from Vancouver, Canada, country to which I'll also be traveling for a festival of colors in Sault Ste. Marie this coming weekend. And I Ram Kishore jumped on board with a Hare Krishna there. Good friend from Minnesota. If you guys have a Rathi Outdoor Festival of Colors up there, perhaps uh, I can help you out. And scrolling down here, Michael, 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 Michael. Wow, I used to call Anjali. Anjali, who no longer joins us as the queen of comments. I think we have someone who's usurped that position. Okay, come in. Okay, Ram Kishore says, Hari Bolt, Spirit Souls. My God. My God. Bhakta Vatsala Das Babaji from New Zealand. God, and these cryptic comments. Okay, here's here's Brent. Here's Balava Chandra. Sometimes you need to hear something three times. You must engage with the name in this age. Okay, well and good. And by Bobby also. Joined us on this Transcendentalist Tuesday. Thank you. I feel like it's been a good discussion. I feel enlivened to 
perform my devotional activities and my bhajan throughout the rest of the day, as I hope are you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Rama, Hare Hare.